more. Uh, I'm going to go through Orasma, and this is going to be a very convoluted presentation because my computer is here, and I'm going to use it as a static screen. So this is going to be highly convoluted, but I can assure you, and you can look at the printouts, I can actually run uh, this from a printout. What we're doing here is any static image, we're replacing it with other images. We'll, we'll just skip through some of these channels. So, for instance, this is from UPS Design Publications. That image triggers this movie. So does this image trigger the movie. And so, when you're opening a book, you can actually use your iPad or your iPhone to actually get an enhanced content from this publication. The students put these things together. This is the students and how they've grown up. Some didn't grow up because they didn't give me their files. Um, but if, if you can, I'll quickly was in. I don't wish to make you seasick, but you can actually see that this sees it recognises an image. It replaces that image with something else. Now that image could be an image. So there you just see them growing up. Or in this case, a film. So a poster will actually take you on a treasure hunt around this building until you get to the next poster. I'll just zoom over to that next poster which will then trigger you on another part of the journey. Okay. So the students did this as part of a welcome, you'll look at the poster and that's all it said. Download this app, look at the poster and then it took you to the next site which then triggered this, this film play. Um, if I double click on the screen, it will launch it full screen, but it will actually um, uh, make you a bit sick because it will spin the image. I'll move on. First began playing with augmented reality in 2008. We, um, I talked to someone about this and they said, oh, we had an augmented reality show last year. And I think we were the first. And I said, we actually did it in 2008. UWS degree show, um, thanks to Paul Coopers. Um, who, in the university's wisdom, um, they didn't renew his contract. He's now set up a, a, a company specialising in augmented reality called Exploring, well, actually, it, uh, rebranding what they call it. So the idea is here you might have a poster, a static image in a degree show, but then you can have live content, um, be it an animation, a movie, or in this case, um, a, a fly around of this uh, design vehicle. I've cheated slightly. This is a vehicle designed by Simon Brook at Monash University, where I was prior to coming here. We, here's an augmented view of the 2013 UWS design show, All or Nothing. And so if you look outside, there is a poster of, of this. If you download the UWS, just down. If you download um, and access Orasma, and then you look for UWS design, no, UWS um, Penrith campus, this is where I've stored all of this information. And so this means that instead of having um, expensive monitors in an exhibition, we can use people's own devices to come along and get content in a, in a video format or an audio format um, or extra content. But because we can play with channels, I'll talk a little bit more about how we can actually add uh, particular information. We can have private channels. So if we look at them, I'll just try and get this. Uh, there's my office. Um, so I could actually send this out as an app, just say, oh, if you want to find out, just look on the campus and this is where it is. But I can actually put in a different channel and I can give you different information from the same trigger image. Just putting in, in one channel, when it goes, it looks in that file, it downloads the image. This one is for Penrith Campus. I'll tell you more about what we can do with this particular app. Oh, I turned the volume down too, too much. I'm sorry I'm not in at the moment. Which is a bit bizarre when you actually see, see the door open. I'm sorry I'm not it in. It actually tells you that they're not in. But it was a fun thing to do. I'm sorry. So 
BB building, which is the building just down, um, I think my orientation's right, just down the road from us, um, I decided to put artwork. I think we've got 1,100 artworks in our collection, um, but I've never seen them. So I figured, I know, here's a way to actually do it. But I actually got some extra artworks from Leo Robber, who was having a, an exhibition. He was a um, sessional staff member. So just looking at windows and things, I, I, I stick some of his paintings up. And that's a massive painting, and when someone comes through the doors, it's actually quite, quite bizarre. If I double click on the image of him, it will then take me to the website where the gallery is um, located, um, because all of these artworks ended up being uh, placed in King Street Gallery. Now this, I've got two different triggers working on, oh, wait a sec, I'll just need to... So here is a, a sign, and then this painting triggers. If I have two devices, sneakily, you'll see that that painting is frightfully similar to the one that just appears. You can have Leo painting the painting inside the painting, which was triggered from a... Uh, yes, it, it gets a little bit bizarre, and we've nearly worked on three devices by people working over other people's shoulders to actually see how each trigger can work. Because I've used a different, I, I've set up a deliberate channel called UWS um, Penrith BB Gallery. If I download and, and access that, there's where it looks. However, on my iPhone, when I trigger that image, don't get sick, I'm just going to put you down for a second. I've actually got a different trigger, um, well, a different, the same trigger, but a different um, response will come from it. And I'm not sure whether you'll be able to hear this. And trust me, it's a little bit slow. When I shine on there, it says, oh, that painting, oh, you won't be able to hear it. It says, oh, that painting was painted in the Everglades in the Blue Mountains. So we can actually have extra little content delivered um, miraculously through this. It's got me thinking, could we stick artwork anywhere? So I'm not sure whether you've seen the Wonderama, which is at Kingswood campus. It's um, about a quarter of a ton of computer and um, these seven um, very large display screens. And you can actually go through um, Google Street View and they've, they've got some APIs on top of that where you can actually, with um, Andrew Leahy um, or Alf, has actually done some wonderful, wonderful things. So we can augment through um, Google Earth and then into Street View and we can place things within Street View. However, I thought it would be quite fun. This is um, uh, a graffiti wall in Zagreb which I figured let's um, have some fun with this. And this is proving very difficult. I need to, unfortunately, I need to take the screen to actually get it to work. But I, I decided to um, stick some priceless paintings on the graffiti wall. So this is uh, the Dali collection. Each of these, as you go around it, if you're there in the real site, well it's actually proving really hard because I'm sort of leaning back over there and I can't quite do it. But each of these images will trigger another image. So I'm thinking of whether we can actually get um, perhaps um, crowdsource photos of your that garden, your living room, and then we can get in consultation with the Louvre and then stick the Mona Lisa above your mantelpiece, or stick a Giacometti sculpture in your garden, or why not stick um, a ballet or, or the Philharmonic Orchestra right down uh, in your backyard, or that graffiti which is detritus, or that big Coca-Cola hoarding, let's replace it with other stuff. So I'm using it for anti-advertising. Um, this is a proposal we got from Penrith City Council some funding um, to set up a um, to do an experiment on looking at uh, green roofs and how rooftop gardens can actually prevent calling, uh, provide calling to the building and, and various things. It was a research project um, which got unstuck when we went to Capital Works. Um, then it went on the whole, we were going to go, and this was going to go somewhere, um, but unfortunately I fell off a bicycle, so it all fell over with it. We still want to do this, to actually install um, a rooftop garden, but to actually say that's the site we're thinking of, sorry I keep doing that, 
there's the site and there's what the garden could be, allows us to sort of explore what's possible. I'm also doing things like the story of food, and this is one thing which I, I ran with my design thinking class um, a couple of years ago. Typical loaf of bread. You pay $2.80. Oh, I'll try and grab... And it's triggering off that logo. Typical loaf of bread. You pay $2.80. But where does the money actually go? The farmer's share is equivalent to just one slice at 13 cents. What's his profit? Less than half of this. Six cents. So there's one thing I was trying to do with students is looking at the hidden story of food and trying to make it real. And, and this actually works in the supermarket. I was going to bring a loaf of bread in and you shine it on the loaf of bread and it sort of tells you that story. Why not replace, this is a project we did uh, five years ago now, um, looking at how we can repurpose, um, oh, this is, this has got a bit of time lag. So there's a, 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 a typical car park and how we can replenish it with um, um, urban agriculture. This isn't going to work, unfortunately. Ah, oh, yes it is. Um, so this is how much water is in a cup of coffee. It's actually, by the time you actually look at it, it's actually 201 litres in a cup of coffee based on a sort of 180 ml cup. And we've got um, the person who provided all of this information coming along here next week to, um, from London to actually uh, run a seminar series with our um, postgrads. What you're trying to do, but just keep rid of this paragraph. What you're trying to do, but just keep rid of this paragraph. But this is an do, interesting but... thing of trying to augment, uh, and this is an experiment which doesn't quite work. So what you're trying to do, but just keep rid of this paragraph. They should be different you're trying bits to do, of feedback. Just keep rid of this paragraph. What are you thinking? 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 And this is the idea that you might have an artwork, and this is for art therapy, that, that the, the explanation of the artwork might be sort of more interesting. And so being able to augment the artwork, that the artwork provides the trigger which releases to a select few those who actually have got access to the channel can get the, the, the story behind the artwork. And that means that you can actually select public and private channels so that you can actually have bespoke um, augmented content from what we might be playing with. Okay, I'm going to put this one down. Um, forgive me, you can look at or oh, lost on campus. What I wanted to say, uh, there are some really good things with Erasmus. I've only got a, uh, two minutes, if that, one minute. Um, okay, some good things. Uh, the same trigger image can actually, if you go through different channels, can actually deliver different content. So that can be sort of customization. If you're a med student or you're a science student, you can have the same chemical, the same cadaver or whatever, and it release different information or different languages to the bespoke people. You can time release the content, so you can actually have it only open until midday, and then it all goes. You can also geofence it. So this means that if we've got um, a logo, perhaps the UWS logo, you shine it up at the UWS logo, if you're on Penrith campus, you'll only get Penrith information of what's on. When you're at Parramatta, it geolocates based on GPS where you are, and it delivers you the Parramatta content. Um, you can double click on an aura, and so once you've got that replacement, you can double click on it and it will launch you to a website. So I've got a couple which are set up outside, which you can get the movie, double click, and it will take you to the website. Um, you can have multiple auras as well. So one can have a, uh, a quick release, so boom, here's an image. Um, and then you can, meanwhile it's downloading another one, which might be a movie, and then it delivers. Or it then delivers a, a question at the end. Did you like this? Did you not like it? Uh, which is the correct answer? And it can and, um, send it through. So those are some of the good things about Erasma. But here are some of the problems. What have learned uh, so far? Infrastructure changes. Building BB, where I've set up my gallery, was um, sort of, um, thanks to Capital Works, it's been beautifully uh, redone. And about $25,000 worth of artwork went missing accordingly. Well, only in virtual terms. Because the, but part of the gallery went. 
when they boxed off that orange box. Um, our office doors have also been replaced with windows in there, so that Rachel Wally opened the door saying I'm not in, no longer works. So all of these things need to be set up. So if you're building it around infrastructure, bear in mind that infrastructure may change. Also lighting conditions, I've played with this with regards to the gallery. So at night time, same window delivers a different image than during the day. Then you've also got winter and summer. You can actually use um, the image to actually trigger different things and you, that can be a sort of a fun experiment to play with. Program changes. Um, as we develop our programs, and that is our academic programs, so the material I developed for design thinking in uh, the school ditched that unit in 2012. So it's redundant. I'm not sure what I do with it. Perhaps it will be uh, re, um, recycled in some other format. Information updates. Um, so the loaf of bread no longer costs $2.80. I looked in, it's $4.60. The farmer still doesn't get any more. Um, other things, um, as triggers are used, and a trigger is just that image which spurs this thing off, um, as more and more get loaded up, it delays the system. It's a bit like everyone wanting to go on views, suddenly it, it slows down. Um, and Orasma gets confused with some of the triggers. So for instance, in that marking feedback where you had James going, what were you thinking? That was the correct image. However, he, he, he also went, fantastic, awesome. But that didn't come through because it recognized the image was very similar to this other image. And so the control of trigger assets, that is actual control of UWS logos, of um, this room, of all of these, these entities which we can use to trigger our auras, without some sort of management and control of that, it can be problematic. Some triggers have already gone. Someone's just used them. Um, also, a naming convention would be useful. Trying to search for certain things is very difficult. And so, if we're going to implement something like Orasma, we need to actually think about naming conventions and a hierarchy of who has access to what assets. The other thing, um, Orasma's colorblind. Um, I found this out sort of when, um, thanks to uh, our, our wonderful blended learning advisors, they. Um, we worked out that it, it, I had a theory it worked on contrast ratios, and yes, it does. So the black and white images will actually trigger the same as the color ones. However, red and blue on the spectrum, red and green, and those sorts of things can actually be highly visible to us, but it doesn't see them. But it does mean that when we do printouts, we can actually use this for lecture content. So here are your lecture notes, and you can go, oh, what was that all about? Boop, you shine it on with your iPad, and it delivers that little bit of movie or, or file footage. Um, movie orientation is also problematic. It, um, I was going to show you more from the art therapy side, but it has a habit of turning portrait landscapes, so everyone's lying down, which is not really good look. Um, and also the interface is somewhat cumbersome. So thank you very much. I'd also like to acknowledge, um, certainly our wonder, wonderful um, blended learning advisors here, but also to thank uh, Paul Kubis from Explore Engage, who, uh, James Avantakis, Tracy Allen, my wife, who did the art therapy part, uh, Leo Robber for putting his artworks in the gallery without, um, and without minding, Abby Lopez and Bill Bellotti for some of the food content, and Simon Brook from Monash who had that spinning car. So thank you very much. Any questions?